Hey guys, um, welcome into Rover Sports. I understand that uh, I understand that I have a cold. Um, I do. I understand that my voice isn't going to be perfect. Um, not saying it is even without a cold, but it can be a, it can be a hindrance to some people that are listening. Anyhow, I wanted to talk about the uh, the championship games. I was also in Mobile, so I'm going to be putting out another video on the prospects that I liked, um, the quarterbacks down there. I was I was in Mobile, so kind of had spotty, um, kind of had spotty service a little bit. So that is kind of why um, I wasn't able to kind of upload as much as I wanted to on the trip, but. Let's talk a little bit about um, the, let's talk about these NFC and AFC championship games. I made like a four minute rant, like in the moment, to you know the blown call with the Saints, and you know as I as I take a step back to look at the call, um, it was a complete robbery. Uh, even you know five days after um, the call. If would have been called, there were two calls, so a hit to the head, a hit to the head, which is very prevalent, and then he arrived like two seconds early. The referee saw the play, and the reason he could have not thrown the flag is, one, he thought the ball was tipped, two, he got too nervous, he froze up and made an error, or it could be these external factors, which is three, this has to do with wanting the game to go a certain way, wanting to rig the game. Los Angeles has a lot more money than the New Orleans area. The the city of LA, the West Coast, LA is a very wealthy city. Beverly Hills, there's a lot of rich areas in LA, put it that way. It's it's like New York City. If the New Orleans Saints fans didn't go to the Super Bowl, that allows more money in the NFL to be sprinkled out to corporate people that would be buying the seats down in um, New or down in Atlanta. I think that LA is a richer market than New Orleans. Now you could say that LA has no fans, but if no fans go, you jack up the price so that you have corporate people that don't really give a shit about football that are still paying to go. The other the other thing that's very prevalent is that, you know, Stan Kroenke and Spanos, the Chargers and the Rams, are moving into a billion dollar stadium. Uh, LA, of course, is such a powerful market. You want to dig into that market by getting the Rams to have the best opportunity to go to the Super Bowl this year. So you have those two things working. You know, the Rams fan base is not very good at the moment. The attendance numbers are not good. They always get outbidded by, uh, you know, freaking away teams. Away teams love playing in L.A. And I'd love for the Giants to go to L.A. next year because I'd have all my friends, uh, I'd have all my brothers there watching the game with me. Uh, literally, it would feel like a, it would feel like MetLife West, and it feels like Lincoln Financial Field West. When I talk to, you know, my dad and other people when they go for the Eagles, it, fe- it felt like a Cowboys playoff game. It was like forty sixty. It's a visitors' paradise. But the L- the, the the market or what's trying to happen is maybe Goodell is trying to get the Rams into the Super Bowl to spark this interest because LA the Lakers games are the highest bidders in town, and if you could dig into that market, then the NFL can make a lot more money. So, you know, you look at New Orleans, you look at the city after Katrina, it's made great strides financially, but but it doesn't equate to the juggernaut, which is Los Angeles. Um, uh, other options are that maybe the official was trying to get the game to end more dramatically because that would have meant that the, um, that the Saints would have kicked a field goal with 20 seconds left. Uh, and then the and then the Rams wouldn't have had an opportunity for a game tying score. Maybe Goodell wanted the game officialed uh, because when you look at the playoffs, I said that the playoffs have sucked so far. You know, I have said that the um, divisional games were not good. Uh, the 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 Chiefs Colts game was supposed to be very good. It was terrible. It wasn't competitive. The Cowboys Rams game. The Cowboys were the most disappointing team for me in the playoffs. That one game was so disappointing because they have Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith, and they have Chris Richard, who's a brilliant defensive mind. 
and they have guys like Crawford and Lawrence on the defensive on the defensive line, and they were still not able to stop C.J. Anderson and Todd Gurley. And if the if the Cowboys defensive line actually played better, we could have gotten a Cowboys Saints conference championship game. And I feel like the Cowboys defense had the ability to make a Super Bowl run this year. I, you know, I watched the Cowboys play against the Saints. I watched the Cowboys play the Eagles. I felt the Cowboys were ready this year to go to a Super Bowl and possibly win a championship. And they let me down and they let their fans down. That was the worst performance of the playoffs. Maybe the Colts going to the Chiefs was a terrible performance. Then the Chargers Patriots game was dog shit. So maybe the NFL was telling the officials, let's try to get this to be a very dramatic ending with Jared Goff having the football. Maybe the officials were like doing a Tim Donahue where they actually had money invested on the ramps. Or it could just be the first two options of human error. Um, We don't know. The point is now is that uh, the Rams fans are now saying, well, the Saints had opportunities to win the football game. And that also can be true. The call did rob the Saints of going because it would have been a 22-yard field goal, which Will Lutz would have had a 98% chance of hitting. And then with 22 seconds left, the Rams would have zero timeouts. So then Jared Goff would have to hit a 48-yard field, a 48-yard pass, spike the ball, and then Zuraline would have to again kick the 60-yarder with 22 seconds left. Give credit to the Rams in this respect. Zuraline was amazing. Jared Goff made timely throws. I don't think he's the most talented guy in the world, Jared Goff, but I will give Goff credit that Goff could potentially have a Hall of Fame career. The things that Goff has done better than I've expected because I've expected the Rams to not be that good. Um, Jared Goff has not turned the ball over. Jared Goff has made really good throws. Like He's very good at, at throwing with anticipation and getting the slants in there. He made a beautiful throw down the Cooks. That touchdown before the half was great. And I feel like the Saints were the better team. I feel like the Saints at home, if they would have replayed the game maybe 10 times, the, the Saints would win six and a half to seven times. I feel like the Saints are a better team. Um, because I feel like the Saints defense is good. I feel like the home crowd w- would have given them the edge. But the Rams did exactly what they needed to to, um, to to win and escape. They played great in situations. That was a great drive by Jared Goff at the end of the game there. Um, their defense in the red zone it, throughout the first couple of quarters. The, you know, after the interception to, o- to only allow three points, keep the game at six. Then it was 13 nothing. Then the fake punt, which was a very good call by Sean McVay, and Hecker is one of the best special teams guys in the game. That that awarded them three points in the drive before the drive before the half. That wins you games. That won the Patriots games. That won the Giants that game in Dallas when Eli Manning went on the two minute drill to beat the Cowboys in 2008 and 2007. That two minute drill before the half, and then the Rams getting the ball out of the break, that that drive really changed the complexion of the game completely. Drew Brees hasn't been as good of a deep ball thrower. His age is starting to show. It's going to be his last year next year, probably. And um, this was his best chance to ever get back. And the, the Saints defense is okay. They have they need like another receiver next year in the draft. But they were a good enough football team to go all the way to the championship. When you look at the Rams season, the Rams played great against the Cowboys. And you got to give the Rams all the credit in the world. Uh, Jared Goff also settled in and played good enough to win. When I look at the Rams historically, without a healthy Todd Gurley, um, I look at Goff as an okay quarterback to a pretty good quarterback. like Like a guy who's clutch, a guy who can make plays. Um, if he beats Brady, then he has a great chance to go to the Hall of Fame. If he doesn't, he might be a Jake DeLome. That's how important this Super Bowl is to Jared Goff. Um, let's see if he wins it, because it would be huge if he obviously can win a championship. I look at McVay as a brilliant coach. I look at Les Snead, and he's been spectacular. And I was dead wrong on the LA Rams, because I said that all these free agents wouldn't pan out. But... Dante Fowler was a brilliant signing. He made a big play in overtime. He played a great championship game. Tlaib locked down Michael Thomas. Tlaib is a great cornerback. And a lot of these guys like Tlaib and Peters, when they were going through the NFC West, which the NFC West sucked, 
these guys would not be, they rose their level of play when it became time for the playoffs. When I look at the Rams this year, they beat the Vikings and played great offensively. The Chiefs game, Jared Goff, honestly, was sensational in those games. You got to give it up to them. Their defense was just average this year. When you look at the sum of all the Rams' parts, I think that when you look back on the championship teams of the early 2000s, they had those defensive pieces. Like, they had the Palomalus, um, the James Harrisons, the... Steelers had those linebackers. They had Big Ben, who was an amazing clutch quarterback. They did have Tomlin, but their defenses were spectacular. The Seattle Seahawks in the Legion of Boom, I think, is much better than this Rams representative of the NFC. Who else do I look at as being just a terrific, terrific representative? Um, Steelers, I said. Green Bay Packers with Clay Matthews, Aaron Rodgers at his peak. That was a good championship team. Denver. Denver and the Carolina Panthers. I look at Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. Demarcus Ware, Von Miller at peak of powers. Um... Talib, the, the the secondary was tremendous with Darian Stewart, Wade Phillips. That was an all-time great defense. Then you had C.J. Anderson as well, who was more in prime. You had, um, I think you had Demarius Thomas. You had Sanders. You had a good tight end that uh, that, that made plays. And Peyton Manning still no, no, knew how to seize the moment. Everybody made fun of Peyton and said that he wasn't that great that final year. He had one of the clutchest drives to get the Broncos to the NFC Championship, AFC Championship, when Peyton Manning went on that final drive against Pittsburgh when uh, Pittsburgh's running back lost the football. So Peyton Manning was still good. Point I'm trying to make is that the Rams, you know, they played the Cardinals and the and the 49ers, which, you know, without Garoppolo and with the Cardinals being a dumpster fire under Wilkes, those were four guaranteed wins. They beat Seattle nicely. They did beat the Vikings. The NFC was supposed to be a gauntlet, and it flat out was not a gauntlet in the least, uh, the NFC. You know, I thought that the Vikings, I thought that the Green Bay Packers would be a lot better than they were. Both ended up like almost firing their head coaches. The Vikings were massively disappointing on the defensive side of the ball. Even the Rams lit them up. Anthony Barr, Xavier Rhodes, all these guys took step backs. Zendejo got hurt. Um, you know, you had Griffin, who's one of the best players on their team. He had some some um, personal issues go on during the season, which hampered his level of play um, and, and just was a hindrance. And then they let go of um, one of my favorite players, Brian Robeson, who I think provided great leadership. And then you look at Eric Kendricks and, you know, just the linebacking core, you know, Ben Gideon. It just was a new group of linebackers. Their defense was massively, and it still is, massively overrated. And Mike Zimmer is massively overrated as a head coach. He's probably going to end up getting fired next year. Um, he had one very good season where he, where his defense was just happened to be perfect. And Pat Shermer and Keenum happened to do well with one of the easiest schedules in the NFL. Other than that, the Vikings have just been just okay. Zimmer hasn't been an elite coach. He's been an okay football coach. Just above average. Same with Ron Rivera in that same respect. But when I look at the Rams, they kind of just got to the playoffs. They beat the Cowboys that one game. And then they hung in there. And I'll give them credit. They took advantage of the opportunities that, that they got versus the Rams. They hung in the game. And they stole one on the road. That's exactly what happened. Zorline made the kick. The roster, the defense never really clicked. They were clicking. Mate. Their offense was great in the beginning of the season. Then they had the dip where they lost to the, to the Eagles and the Bears. Then they kind of readjusted themselves. And then it just shows you that the NFL right now is a watered-down product with these defenses because you have the Bears that are a great defense and the Ravens, but they didn't have the offenses to supplement their defense. 
When I looked at the Legion of Boom, you had Russell, you had Marshawn, you had Percy Harvin. When you look at Tom Brady, he had better defensive players in New England back like maybe four years ago. Um, that year with Cam Newton, you had Josh Norman at peak of powers, Jared Allen, um, Julius Peppers, I believe. That, that, that Carolina Panthers defense was so good and Cam Newton was incredible. And that game against the Cardinals and against Seattle... That Panthers team was a 15-1 juggernaut playing the Denver Broncos, which is one of the best defenses ever, with a great receiving core and Peyton Manning. So that was a competitive Super Bowl. Colts and Saints back in 09 was a hell of a Super Bowl. When you look at the Hall of Famers on the LA Rams, it you know you look at Donald, and yes, Donald is a pretty good player. But I don't look at this defense as just a Hall of Fame defense. You know, I look at Talib, I look at the pieces being good, but they haven't really gelled under Wade Phillips like I expected them to. And you got to give them credit for for getting through, for finally winning. But I think the NFL is a little bit watered down. I really do. Having the Patriots and, and the Rams in the Super Bowl, there's just not the dominant teams. And for teams like the Giants out there, teams like the Jets, the Buffalo Bills, if you can somehow get a couple of pieces in the draft, kind of like Chicago did, the avenue to a Super Bowl, it's not as daunting as it seemed. Like we looked at the NFC this year and we fought 49ers. We fought Rams and Saints would be so, so good. We fought the Vikings and the Packers would be elite. We fought that the Falcons, that the Carolina Panthers, that all the teams in the South would be really good. Instead, the Bucks were horrible. The The Falcons almost fired Dan Quinn, and they, they had terrible injuries. And who knows if they're ever going to get back to NFC Championship under Shanahan again. The Panthers right now are going through a period where it looks like they're rebuilding. Who knows about Cam's future? Who knows about Ron Rivera's? They took a huge step down. The NFC seemed unaccessible, but now it seems very accessible. Let's talk about Patrick Dan Mahomes. Let's talk about Patrick Mahomes in that other game. Mahomes was absolutely incredible. And I'm going to do a film review later, and I'm going to go into detail. Donovan McNabb and Alex Smith, there is no way that those two quarterbacks could have ever conducted themselves in the manner that Patrick did on that Sunday. It was a heavyweight battle. For all the sloppiness that the Saints had with the, you know, the screen pass called on first down, not bleeding out the clock, not operating in the red zone, the Saints throwing the interception after getting the coin toss in overtime, like the Saints still had chances to win. It doesn't nullify that the call did cost them the chance to win. But when we look at Patrick Mahomes in this matchup, Mahomes, I look at a quarterback if you, it, it, as a fan is actually having as actually having a very good judge of how special and good a quarterback is. For Patriots fans that I've spoken to and I've heard on podcasts, like Bill Simmons, I think, has a really good podcast with Cousin Sal. And he talked about, and I agree, that Mahomes, going against Mahomes, is one of the most terrifying things that you could ever endear. And that's because Mahomes, at any instant, can hit you. And Mahomes and the Chiefs, in the first half, they were rattled. The Patriots' defense had them. The Patriots were running the ball. The Patriots were ready. And the moment in Kansas City seemed too big. It seemed exactly like it was headed towards... The Eagles, when I watched Andy Reid in Philadelphia, when the Eagles played the Carolina Panthers and they shat the bed, or when the Eagles played the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Bucks just came in there and whipped them in the last game of the link, and Jared Vicious, and, and John Lynch, and Derek Brooks, and Warren Sapp, and the Rondé Barber interception with McNabb, or with Alex Smith, it seemed like the game against the Steelers where the Steelers just held them at arms, uh, held them at bay the entire game. And then you could talk about, oh, Alex Smith had a two-point conversion to tie it. No, it was never that close. That score was not indicative of how 
lopsided and how horrible that Chiefs effort was against the Steelers or how horrible the second half was against Andrew Luck. Mahomes, the throw to Sammy Watkins, I think is one of the greatest throws I've ever seen because of the psychology of the moment. They have jack shit going on. They're playing against Belichick. They're playing against the Patriots, a team that has been here every single time and they have nothing going on. And Mahomes rolls to his right and he sits there, he doesn't panic. And he throws the ball, to, and he's leaning to his right, he throws it damn near 60 yards in the air. And the coverage was pretty much perfect, and he led Sammy Watkins to the right quadrant for the sideline. And that play just, it, it just changed everything. It's amazing. The guy is like a switch. That's how, that's why arm strength matters. That's why having a huge arm, that's why being, when people talk about being a gunslinger, they often use it as a negative term in, in terms of throwing interceptions. But that risk that Mahomes took by throwing that launcher, that changed the game. Then you hit Travis Kelsey, boom, holy shit, what a drive that was. Then then he throws a perfect swing pass to Damian Williams. Then he throws the sidearm throw to Sammy Watkins on third and two as he gets decapitated. Mahomes was a freak in the second half. He was unbelievable. Against Bill Belichick, I've never seen... He carried Andy Reid. You know how we talk about Baker Mayfield and how Mayfield carried the Browns, Mayfield carried Haslam, Mayfield carried Greg Williams? Mahomes it carried Andy Reid. Andy Reid's a guy that's, you know, very... Um, I'm not going to say apathetic, but he's slow moving, slow moving, scientific thinker sort of a guy that in the big games, he lacks that urgency. He lacks the instinct of how important the moment is and when it's slipping away and Mahomes to that drive to Kelsey, when he hit Watkins and Kelsey, he said, guys, we ain't going freaking anywhere. This is going to be a long football game and we're here and we're right on the doorstep of a Super Bowl. Let's effing go. He, he basically grabbed the Chiefs organization there and he took it on the ride. He put Reed in the sled and he pushed that sled in the gear. Mahomes took over that second half. He was the leader, the conductor of that engine. And any a lot of other quarterbacks, whether it was McNabb with Andy Reed, and McNabb was a good quarterback, they would never grab the sled and push the whole unit forward. They would just simply go quietly into that good night. They would just simply, you know, dilly-dally around and, and probably lose the game by 14 to Tom Brady. Alex Smith, when he went to Foxborough, it's the same thing. When Mahomes hit Sammy Watkins, when Mahomes hit Aldrick Robinson, Mahomes can strike you in an instant from anywhere on the field. One of the most ta- one of the most talented quarterbacks I've ever seen. It was, it was a magical performance by Patrick Mahomes because it was 14 to nothing. They had jack shit going on. He could have just laid down. I bet you 90% of quarterbacks want to lay down. But it's the same thing when I saw Tua come in versus Alabama. Tua Tango Vailoa. And I said to my dad, I said, Tua's winning this shit. Tua Tango Vailoa is the magic man. He's magic. He's magic. He's magic. He's not built like a mortal. He will come in and beat Georgia. I said that to my dad. I said, this guy Tua is just... He is just something from, he's just something else. You know, and that's what Patrick Mahomes is. He's unique. He's different. He's not the same cat Andy Reid's had. And for him psychologically to get back in that game and to throw 31 points on the Patriots, a barrage of all sorts, and then with 39 seconds left after Tom Brady, you know, Tom Brady, by the way, I mean, the whole game was just ridiculously good. But Patrick Mahomes, for him with 39 seconds left to get the Chiefs in the position where we're literally talking about throwing a touchdown in the end zone, I said to the people sitting next to me, I said, Mahomes could win this shit right now with 39 seconds left. That's how confident you feel of Mahomes. You should never feel that confident with 39 seconds left that you're going to get a touchdown. But with Mahomes... He could throw an 80-yard touchdown. Like nothing is out of the realm. And as a Patriots fan, Mahomes had them on the edge of their seats. Mahomes was dangling the Patriots the entire time. 
And the Patriots fans, they should have the utmost respect for Mahomes. And Mahomes, for him to even get them in Butker range, the throw to Robinson, the throw across the middle of the field, there's no panic in the guy. The guy's a competitor. The guy is as humble as they come off the field. Most likable athlete of our generation. Who knows, maybe Mahomes will start winning, then people won't like him, kind of like a Steph Curry, because Steph Curry used to be like Mahomes, a freak of nature that everybody loved when he was coming up, and I still really like Steph Curry. But Mahomes is really the face of the NFL, couldn't be a nicer guy, and I was proud of the fact that I you know, said that Mahomes would be great. I said Mahomes would be an MVP candidate, that he would come second to Garoppolo. Garoppolo ended up getting hurt. I had the Chiefs going to the championship way back last March, and I said it was Patriots or Chiefs, and and the AFC played exactly out like I thought, and that game was a heavyweight battle. Tom Brady on third down to Edelman, he was nails. That's why Tom Brady's one, that's why he is the best of all time, because the drives against Seattle, where I was watching him, he pretty much took the Legion of Boom, one of the greatest defenses in NFL history. And he, 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 re- he pretty much picked them apart during the last quarter of that Super Bowl against the Falcons. He needed to be perfect for, for three quarters. Down 28-3, to three, he needed every drive to be perfect and end in touchdowns. And they knew he was throwing and, he was just, and they couldn't do anything against it because he was, he was ice. Tom Brady is a surgeon. Tom Brady in the biggest moments, that's when he's his most precise. That's when he's able to quiet everything. And that's when he ex- executes to the highest levels. And he needed to execute like three times to beat Mahomes and put the Chiefs away. By the way, if the Chiefs scored a touchdown in overtime on a walk-off, kind of like Tebow to Demarius, we're not talking about the overtime rules either. Overtime is fine. I like that you need to score a touchdown now. It used to be worse when you just needed a field goal, especially with how, you know, Zerline is. That would almost be like a cheat code because he would just kick it from 57 yards out there. But the Rams, no one's complaining about overtime in that game because the Rams got to stop. Like the Chiefs have to just get a stop. I mean, if you're a defense, stop rewarding this like, participation trophy style of defense where oh it's not fair that the other quarterback doesn't get to touch the ball defense is a part of the game if your defense is that shitty that you can't get a stuck that you can't get the other team off the field before letting them reach get into the end zone if, if you give up 38 points and you can't get a stop sorry go home you don't deserve to win the football game you don't deserve to represent in the super bowl and i was i was pretty much rooting for the chiefs you know how much i love the chiefs Fact is, now for the Super Bowl, we get the Rams, we get the Patriots in the bowl again. Don't love the Rams. Don't love the Patriots, really. No, I'm not going to be a bandwagon fan like I know some people are. Um, but I'm probably rooting for New England to beat up, uh, beat, beat the Rams. Uh, you know, 49ers channel here. And uh, yeah, pretty much rooting for Tom to just get it done again. And uh I don't love the Patriots. I, I, I don't love the uh, the Rams. If the Chiefs were in the Super Bowl, I'd be extremely nervous for Andy Reid. I'd be very nervous. It was almost like loyal love Chicago. I cared so much about them. I cared so much about them that it, it, it actually is less painful losing in the conference championship than losing in the Super Bowl. Losing in the Super Bowl is as painful as anything. Luckily, as a Giants fan, haven't had to experience it. Uh, except for when I was maybe 10 years old with the Ravens game. Anyway, guys, I like doing this long podcast. It was fun. I talked about everything that I wanted to about these championship games, how incredible Brady and Mahomes were. And I'm going to do a film review as well that is going to illustrate exactly how special Mahomes was and how special that duel was with Tom Brady. But that's my opinions on the Saints call, on pretty much everything. And I tried to lay it out here in this video. So it's great to be back with you guys. It's good to throw up a video. I know I haven't put out anything this week. So it's good to get back. And it's good to uh, get back to uploading a video. So, alrighty guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care. Thanks.